my beloved brethren, most respected elders, mothers and sisters. Our topic today is Jannah and Jahannam. When the Hisab finishes, when the account of man ends, he goes either to Jannah or to Jahannam. And we have become negligent of the fact that we will have to pay an account. We will have to stand in front of Allah Rabbul Izzah and give an account of the life that we have spent. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, اقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ The hisab of man has come clear, has come near. The hisab is on the precipice. And poor man, poor man is still heedless and asleep. He's in ghafla. But hisab will come. And after hisab, it is either Jannah or it is Jahannam. And my Allah, Rabbul Izzah, make me and you of the people of Jannah. I will start this afternoon with Jahannam. But before I start, I must clarify certain etiquettes <coughs> when the adab of Allah Rabbul Izzah is being mentioned. When the Ashab used to hear about Jahannam, they used to tear and cry till their beards would become wet and the ground under their feet would start to become wet. And this is for two reasons. One is that the verses had a direct impact on their hearts. And second, that they didn't want the Lord to see them as people being not affected by the punishment of Allah Rabbul Izzah. So today when we discuss the adab of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid, ensure that your Lord sees you as people afraid of the punishment of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid. Because the punishment of Allah is severe. May Allah save me and you from his wrath and his punishment. In a hadith narrated in the Sahihain by Nu'man ibn Bashir, he says that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Inna ahwana athaban yawm al-qiyama O inna ahwana ahlin nari athaban yawm al-qiyama لرجل يوضع في أخمص قدميه جمرتان يغلي منهما دماغه The most lightest, gentlest, simplest punishment of Jahannam is that a man will be made to stand on two bits of coal and these special coals will make his brains boil. And that is the lowest level of punishment in Jahannam. That is, and the hadith says that the strange thing is that he will think he is enduring the greatest punishment, yet it is the easiest of punishments in Jahannam. The Prophet ﷺ told us that the fire of Jahannam was ordered to be kindled and it burnt for a thousand long years. After a thousand years of burning, it turned red hot. You know that red vibrant color, that hot, red hot. So Allah Rabbul Izzah ordered it burn a thousand more, so it burnt a thousand more and it became white hot. And then the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid ordered it to burn a thousand more and it became black hot. Today, Jahannam rages black and thick. And um, for the youngsters at the back, your scientists or people who might have some exposure to science, if you look at the sun, the sun has a surface temperature of 15 million degrees centigrade. The Lord that made that sun on, on, in this world will call make a Jahannam much hotter than it in the Akhirah. This is not beyond expectation or beyond belief. He's already done it. You can see it. And 
your bodies cannot bear Jahannam. If the human in its current form is thrown into Jahannam, he will evaporate. So Allah Rabbul Izzah increases your size to a size that you can bear the punishment of Jahannam. So the Rasul gave us an idea because, you know, just a ratio. He says the tooth of a person in Jahannam will be the size of the mountain of Uhud. Now Uhud is not a hill, it is a mountain. And for those of you who have seen it or haven't seen it, it's a huge mountain range. So the Prophet wasallam said the, the tooth of a person in Jahannam is the size of the mountain of Uhud. The thickness of his skin, if a rider were to ride for three days straight, that's how thick his skin will become. And when he is placed in Jahannam, he will scream in agony and the fire will burn. And this thick skin will burn to the level where it loses its sensitivity. Because so far as human creation is made, the sensory cells are on the upper level of the skin, on the epidermis. So when the skin burns and it comes to the level where his pain sensations reduce, Allah Rabbul Izza says, كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time his skins burn away, we fashion him with skin anew so that he can taste the punishment of Allah Rabbul Izza. Understand, Allah Rabbul Izza is a perfect being. His punishment is perfect and his reward is perfect. When he wishes to reward you, you will not feel more satisfied than when Allah chooses to reward you. And when he wishes to punish you, you will not experience more agony than when Allah Rabbul Izza chooses to punish you. His punishment and his reward like himself are perfect. So Jahannam is made pure punishment. There's no rahma in Jahannam. There's no mercy in Jahannam is just azab. And normally when you're being punished, if you go to jail, if you're in a war, if you're in, in a torture session, whatever, the, there are certain things that make it bearable. So you think that I am in jail, it will end soon. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, there's, there's a light at the end of this ugly tunnel. It will finish soon. The person is torturing you, you'll say eventually he'll become tired, it'll, it'll finish soon. There is hope at the end of or you'll say I'll die at the end of it, there is an end. In Jahannam there is no end. And don't think as Muslims, you say, eventually I will go to Jannah, you will, it is true. But if Allah Rabbul Izza were to even dip you in Jahannam, and may Allah save me and you from Jahannam, if Allah were to even dip you from Jahannam, it will suck away every happiness from you. The Prophet Sallallahu says, in the Akhirah, a person will be brought who was very blessed in the world. He had everything, he had wealth, he had looks, he had... Um, you know, women and he had servants, he had everything, he, he, he lived in Ni'ma, An'am al nas And then in the Akhirah, he is destined for Jahannam, so the Dhul Arsh al-Majid takes him and the Hadith says just dips him once in Jahannam and pulls him out. And he tells him, have, do you remember any goodness? He says, I have not lived a single moment of goodness. The goodness is sucked out of him, you know, like a, for the kids who read Harry Potter, like a Dementor sucks out happiness, is sucked out of him. There's no, there, there's no goodness left. And there is no end. When you're in Jahannam, and the people of Jahannam have entered Jahannam, and the people of Jannah have entered Jannah, in between the two, Death is brought in the form of a, of a sheep. And the angel calls out, O people of Jannah, do you know this? They say, yes, we know it. We met it. It's death. So he will ask the people of Jahannam, O people of Jahannam, do you know this? 
the Sayyid is death. So then he slaughters death, kills it like you kill a sheep, like you slaughter a sheep. And then he proclaims to the people of Jannah. Says, Ya Ahlul Jannah, Khuludun Fala Maut. Wa Ya Ahlul Nar, Khuludun Fala Maut. O people of Jannah, eternity and no death. O people of Jahannam, eternity and no death. As in there is no coming out, this is it. Ila abadil abad. And a day in the record of Allah Rabbul Izzah, ka alf sanatim mimma ta'udun is like a thousand years of your time. A day of Allah Rabbul Izzah. So if you were to stay in Jahannam for a day, you are actually staying in it for a thousand years of our time. Uh, Muslims feel the fear of the adab of Allah Rabbul Izzah and ask Allah's protection from it because wallahi I tell you as easily as he made the sun he has made the Jahannam so this is the first psychology of punishment that it will end but Jahannam doesn't end and then the second thing, when you get punished normally, you grow resilient to the punishment. You know, the person bashes you one day, first day it's a big deal, second day it becomes a little less, third day you become used to it. You understand me? You, you, you grow, the human nature is like that, it, it's adaptive. After a while you'll just sit, you go hit me and he's hitting you and, and you're okay. But Allah Rabbul Izzah has made the punishment of Jahannam such that at every level it keeps increasing. So from one moment to the next it is worse. There's no getting ready for it. There's no building resistance and resilience for it. And then you are there for as long as, you know, Subhan al Khaliq, you know, you, you, you're in the fire. And it lasts and your skin burns and it gets refreshed and, and it gets burnt and it gets... Then you hunger. Because your normal human capacities are there. But what type of food exists in Jahannam? A tree called Shajaratu Zakum. The tree of Zakum. Its roots is in the depths of hell. Can you imagine a tree, an existence, that can bear the heat of hell? The Rasul said if a drop of Zakum were to land on, the, on earth, uh, there, will be no, there will be nothing growing or existing on the planet. A drop of it. So toxic. Um, but in Jahannam, it grows. Its roots are in the pus and the blood and the gore of the Jahannamis. And the Quran describes it, طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ Its fruits are like the heads of the devils. When you hunger, you are made to eat from that. But remember, a drop of it is toxin enough to destroy the world. But Allah Rabbul Izzah says, فَمَالِئُونَ مِنْهَا الْبُطُونَ your stomachs will become filled with it. They won't give you a little bit. They'll stuff you with it till you're filled with it. And then that creates thirst. So you long for water. It's hot and it's thirsty. وَإِن يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَاءٍ كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهِ When you ask for water, a water is given to you so hot that it bakes the face as you eat, as you drink it. So Jahannam is an abode of punishment. And then you think normally when someone punishes a person, if he has a group with him, you know, if 10 people are getting punished together, they take solace in their numbers. Do you understand me? You kind of grow uh, camaraderie that, you know, we, we're, we're in this together. In Jahannam, there's no friendship and camaraderie. Everyone is blaming the other person and saying, Ya Rabb, Give them double the punishment that you gave us because they misled us. Even they reach shaitan. 
You know, and they say, Ya Rab, he led us astray. And he says, Allah Rabbul Izza made you a promise, and I made you a promise. I made the promise and betrayed the promise. I had no authority over you. Don't come blaming me that, you know, you did it. I invited you, accepted you, bear it. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't blame me, blame yourselves. Um, this is just a little glimpse of Jahannam. So you're there in that, in that Adab. And the Jahannam has angels, guardians over it. Tis'ata Ashar, 19. And Allah Rabbul Izza describes them Ghilaadun Shidad. Severe. Hard hearted. They know no kindness. They are the intense, harsh, cold creatures. So you're in that Jahannam for eons. And imagine if it's a day. In our time, it's a thousand years. Imagine you're there for a thousand years. It's a million years of our, it's, you know, more than millions of our times. Because each day is a million year, uh, is a thousand years. And the people of Jahannam losing hope. There's no death. There's no end. They call out to the guardians of Jahannam, to the 19 angels. They are 19, their leader is Malik. He is the, the one that oversees Jahannam. So they just call to the, to the ordinary, 19, that ask your Lord, ask your Lord to stop, reduce the punishment for one day. There's, they know the climate. They know there's no chance of death. Uh, you know, they know there's no chance of the stopping or ask you know, for them to be left out or to come out. They know there's no way out. So they say, take one day off. Give us one day break. Give us one day break from the adab. So the angels ask them, didn't messengers come to you? Have you been put here accidentally? Like, didn't the messenger come to you? They say, yes, messengers can. So then he goes, then ask, call out, make as much dua as you want, Allah won't accept it. Because the dua of here is fi dalal. So then they stay eons more. Some scholars say, for a million years. <clears throat> and they call out to their leader, Malik. And they call out, Ya Malik! O oh Malik! The, the, the next level. <clears> o <throat> oh Malik! Tell your Lord to finish us. As in kill us. Can you imagine a punishment that now death is preferable? We don't, we know there's no way out, just ask Allah Rabbul Izzah to destroy us. And they call out and the hadith, so the Mufassirin say, this is for eons, they're calling. And he won't even look. And eventually he turns and says two words. You're staying. That's it. You are staying. So then there's only one being left to turn to. <coughs> and they call out to Allah, Rabbul Izza, direct. Ya Rabb, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And they call out and call out. And Allah, Rabbul Izza, tells them, didn't my verses come to you? Didn't I give you a chance? Didn't it become very clear that this is right and this is wrong? And didn't you disbelieve and reject so now, اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون. Bear it and do not talk. So this is, this is Jahannam. 
I don't like talking about it. And I don't want to spend too much time on it. But my dear brothers understand. Wallahi. The one that created. Remember. Go back a few years. You didn't even exist. Go back a few years. You didn't. No one even. You didn't even register anywhere. You are nothing. For the kids at the back. Go back 20 years. No one had even planned your existence. For the elders, go back 30, 40 years. Some go 50, 60 years. There was a time, لم يكو مذكورة, you are not even heard about. Then two little bits of liquid joined together. And from this a full individual. And then that individual is born. And then he grows, so Allah gives them some strength. Allah gives him a nose that he can breathe with, eyes that he can see with. And he grows the audacity to be arrogant and cocky against his Lord. And the fool doesn't recognize that Allah Rabbul Izzah can take him any moment. I have seen people in my life. I, my classmate, 17 years old, died. 17 year old died. Uh, in our school, one boy kicked a ball and it hit the stomach of another boy. The boy fell down dead in, this, uh, in the school. You don't know when you're going to die. <clears throat> but the moments you have, you live so arrogantly. <clears throat> as though no one has any power over you. As though you answer to no one. أَيَحْسَبُ أَنْ لَمْ يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أَحَدٍ no one has any power over me. I am above this. I am beyond this. <clears throat> and Allah Rabbul Izza says, I was the one that created you first when you were nothing. So that same being will resurrect you. And that same being will test you and question you and reward you or punish you. And may Allah Rabbul Izza reward us instead of punishing us. The next path is the path of Jannah. And may Allah Rabbul Izzah enter me and you into Jannah. So when the Hisab is finished, the people of Jannah will be moved in their hordes towards Jannah. Qala subhana, wasiqa alladheena attaqaw, wasiqa alladheena attaqaw, no, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا And we move those who had the taqwa of Allah Rabbul Izza towards Jannah in their hordes, in their groups, they will move towards Jannah. And they will come in front of the gates of Jannah, but the gates of Jannah will be closed. The gates of Jannah will be closed. And the people of Jannah have gathered in front of it. Can you imagine the anticipation? Beyond these grand doors exist what they were longing for and working for and striving. An abode made for their delight. This world is beautiful. Wallahi, you drive around here, you see the rolling hills, you see the rivers, you see the animals, you see the people. Oh, it's beautiful. But this is an abode of test. This is not an abode of reward. So imagine an abode made for reward. Jannah. So the people of Jannah are outside, but the gates will not open. And then our Prophet wasallam comes through. And it's as though I imagine it, people parting. And the Rasul comes to the guardian of the gate and he says, I am Muhammad Rasulullah. I am Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. So the guardian says, Umirtu li alla uftiha ala ahadin qablak. I was ordered not to open to any before you. And now the gates of Jannah will open. And when the gates of Jannah open, you will see the delights, the, the hadith Qudsi describes. It says, A'adadtu li ibadi salihin ma la aynun ra'at I have prepared for my righteous servants what no eye has ever seen, what no ear has ever heard, nor has it ever occurred on the imagination of man. 
what as I describe Jannah today, you will visualize certain things, but understand whatever comes in your mind as imagination, Jannah is way, way beyond that. So as you enter Jannah, as you enter Jannah, you will know your house in your abode better than you know it in this world. And then the logical question is, what is the abode made of? So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, describe for us the buildings of Jannah. So the Rasul said, لَبِنَةٌ مِّن ذَهَبٍ وَلَبِنَةٌ مِّن فِضَّةٍ Abu Huraira, the world that you live in is made from brick and mortar and wooden. So Jannah is not like this. I'm giving tafsir, this is not the word of the hadith, yeah? The words in Arabic. Jannah, one brick is made from silver and one brick will be of gold. Like a brick of silver and brick of gold. So, Ya Rasul, what will be the cement? وَمِلَاتُهَا المسك. And misk, misk is, is hard to get these days, probably illegal to get these days. Um, misk is a, is a scent, it's a perfume that exists in the umbilical glands of certain deers in the Himalayas. It's a specific type of deer. It has it in its umbilical glands. Uh, and there's another animal in Africa called the civet. They have it too. So when you cut open the umbilical gland and you take out these little granules from it and you process it, the sensation of mist comes from it. And I was in Malaysia. The person told me I will sell you 10 grams for $3,000. 10 grams is that much for $3,000. A rare exotic phenomenal. So the, perf the, the cement of the bricks of Jannah is misk. And it's soil or it's rocks, it's pebbles, lu'lu'u wal yaqutu wal marjan. Pearls, rubies, and emeralds. Its soil or its sand is misk and its dust is za'faran. The fragrance of Jannah, this, you know, there's different hadith for it, but from a distance of 40,000 years, you'll smell Jannah. Uh, in Western perfumes, I, I mean, you know, um, People buy a lot of perfumes. I have never seen that experience where, where it comes and just blows on you like that. Uh, in, in Arab perfumes, you will get it. You know where they have the bukhur or, or the oud. Um, if it's in a room, as you open the doors, it will gush out. So the, as the gates of Jannah open, the fragrance of it will blow you away. And then... The buildings, you're used to these little brick buildings. You will go into Jannah, it will be gold and silver, but that's not it. And remember, the Prophet ﷺ saw Jannah, and he entered Jannah. The hadith says, دَخَلْتُ الْجَنَّةِ I entered Jannah. فَإِذَا أَنَا بِقَصْرٍ مِّنْ ذَهَبٍ In front of me came a palace of pure gold. So the walls are gold, the doors are gold, the pillars are gold, the floors are gold, it is gold. And the Prophet ﷺ is taken aback by it, like he, he's amazed by it, like, you know, this, this is gold. And not a little bit of gold, I mean, you know, a little bit of gold is dazzling. Uh, someone wears a gold ring, not nice and glittery, you're amazed by it. You know, the sisters wear their fancy necklaces, you look at it, you're amazed by it. Um, this, this, the whole building, can you imagine, just pure gold. So, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, To the angels, whose is this? Whose palace is this? So the angel said, لِفَتَمْ مِنْ Quraysh To one of the youngsters of Quraysh. It belongs to one of the youth of the Quraysh. So the Rasul said, فَظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي أَنَاهُ I thought, 
you're talking about the youth of the Quraysh. I am the prince of the sons of Quraysh. So it's obviously mine. But for confirmation, he says, Man who? Who is that youth, that young man? So the angel said, Umar ibn al-Khattab. This is the palace of Umar. So the Rasul says, I wanted to go inside and check it out. فَتَذَكَّرْتُ غَيْرَتَكْ I remembered your sense of ghira. You know, your protectiveness over your women. So I didn't go in. So Umar is sitting, he started to cry. He says, مِنْكَ أَغَارُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Oh Rasul, I would have ghira with you with regards to my women. Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says Khadija is about to enter the room radiyallahu anha our mother Khadija te kubra about to enter the room and she's carrying with her a platter of food when she comes in aqra' her salam say salam to her from who? mir rabbiha from her lord think about it Jibreel is seated, according to the verse, near the throne of Allah, Rabbul Izzah. So the Dhul Arsh al-Majid tells him, Jibreel, go down seven heavens to the house of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Why? Tell Khadija I said salam. You see, there's, there's levels. If there's a lady that wishes to aspire for a position, that's a position to aspire to. Aqra'ha salam. Say to her salam. Mir rabbiha. From her Lord. And then Jibreel wants to get involved as well. So he says, wa minni. And also say salam to her from me. And then, wa bashirha bi baytin fil jannah min qasab. Wal qasabu fil lughati lu'lu'am mujawwafa. And give her the glad tidings of a house in paradise made from a single pearl. You know a, a proper pearl, you know, salt water pearl, um, natural, um, easy, $10,000 for, for a little pearl. Hers is a palace made from a single pearl. And then Jibreel guarantees, she says, there's no, he says, there's... No ill or defects in that place. It is a place made for joy. There's no sickness, no sadness, no fatigue, no cracks, no, no up point, no low point. It is built to perfection. This is the house and the palace of Khadija the Kubra. These are the, the dwellings of Jannah. Just the, the dwellings of Jannah. And under each house, rivers fly, flow. There will be rivers going through. You have rivers of water, some polluted because mankind didn't know how to look after Allah's gifts. But Allah Rabbul Izzah says, مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ فيها أنهار من ماء غير آس. The example of the paradise we have created for our believers. In it is rivers of water pure and clear. So count with me. A river of water. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرُ طَعْمُهُ In a river of milk, the taste of which will never change. You go picnicking by the river, and it's just a little watery river, sometimes foul-smelling. Now imagine a river of white milk going through. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِّنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ and rivers of wine, a delight to drink. So the wine of here intoxicates and gives headaches, gets you out of control. That wine will give you the feel good without its headache and intoxication. And then the cream of all. 
and rivers of pure, pristine honey. Can you imagine honey going through a river like that? And each person will have the four rivers through his property. And when you enter your, your, your house, you know, you go towards your palace, your spouse will already be there. Whether that is your righteous wife from here, or the wife Allah will give you in Jannah. And beauty is so out of this world, that the first time you see her, one scholar of hadith says, for 40 years you'll be stuck like that. Like, oh yeah, yo, what is this? You like that, huh? <laughs> Allah give it to you, Ya Rabbi. Um, and the hadith says, And her scarf ala ra'siha aghla min dunya wa ma fiha. Just her scarf is more precious, more valuable, more pricey than the earth and whatever it has. Just her scarf. And in the aqwal, it says, If her nail were to come out of the heavens, the sun would go dark in shame of her. And her fragrance would cover the heavens. Um, these are the delights of Jannah. And you know, um, in your world, you go to a restaurant or a hotel and you get different star ratings. Yeah, You get you know, one star rating, don't go to those ones. And then you, you get the, the higher star rating. And uh, about four and a half is when it becomes reasonable. Uh, and, and then five is good. Uh, and then you go to, to uh, Burj Khalifa in, in, in Dubai and they've got the seven stars, the only place on the planet so far with the seven stars. And you can see, you, you distinguish service very straight away. You know, uh, there's elegance in the cups, the way it is brought, the way it is served, waiters, uh, the training of the waiters. So Allah Rabbul Izza in the Akhirah has prepared it. And he says, وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ And young, perpetually uh, youth, youth and perpetual youth, will be walking and waiting on them, you know, amidst them. Waiting on them as waiters. إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ حَسِبْتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤًا مَنْثُورًا If you saw them, you would think they are like pearls scattered. Like so fine, elegant, well-clad, well-dressed, good-looking, um, presentable, uh, classy. So they carry your food and stuff, you know, your drinks. What do you think the cup would be? So the Quran says, they will have glasses, qawarira. Qawarira is glass, as in see-through. But the qawarira min fiddatin qaddaruha. This is silver. But silver cut so fine that it is see-through. But then the Quran specifies, filled elegantly. Like don't think this is just an overflowing, you know, messy place here. Drink, it's a place of elegance. مُتَّكِئُونَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسًا وَلَا زَمْهَرِيرًا They are reclining on high beds and sofas. In an abode where there's no scorching heat, nor the chill of the cold. Perfect weather. Trees of Jannah. The hadith says, it will take a rider a hundred years to come out of the shade of one of the trees of Jannah. It's trunk pure gold. So this is glimpses of Jannah. And... The Prophet wasallam was explaining <coughs> that the birds around my hawl, around the fountain of the Prophet, the spring of the Rasul, they have necks like the neck of birds, uh, like the neck of camels, thick, big creatures. So Umar ibn al-Khattab is there, and Umar said, lucky birds, you know, because they get to drink from the hawl there. So the Prophet said, no, lucky is the people who will eat them. You know, when, these, when they, whoever's there, the, the one eat, feasting on them is the lucky person. And 
For some, Allah Rabbul Izza will place them on the neck of birds. Like they are birds in paradise, green big birds. And you will sit on the neck of the bird and you will say, go there. And the bird flies. Takes you to that spot and then you go, go to that tree. And it will go. And then imagine you want something. So you're thinking barbecue chicken. You, you don't ask for it. You just say, Subhanak Allahumma. And it will come in its most perfect form in front of you. Amama aynaik wa bayna yadaik. Jannah is the abode of delight. You will be with your wife or with the women of paradise. And you look away and look back and you go, you look more beautiful than you did a moment ago. It just increases. In this world, everything decreases. You know, you have one bite of food, the second bite is less tasty. Um, ten bites le after it's less tasty, a hundred bites less, you need to go to the hospital. You understand? It, it gets less and less. And then when you eat, you know it's, it's got an answer. You know, you've got to go to answer the call of nature. You, then, you know, if you're in a meeting or something, you eat a little. Jannah is not like it. There's no filth in Jannah. There's no phlegm. There's no uh, feces. There's no bowel. There's no... Um, all, you eat whatever you want and as much as you want, a little sweat will come on your skin, this fragrance of misk, and it will disappear. Just like that. Uh, some of the, anyway, I, I, I need to go to, my, to the next part because my time is running out. So these are all the joys of Jannah. And Allah take you, me and you to Jannah. But the greatest and grandest prize in Jannah is on the day of Mazid. So when the people of Jannah have entered Jannah and they have enjoyed Jannah, then they will hear a caller make the call. Ya Ahl al-Jannah, O people of Jannah, Inna Rabbakum tabaraka wa ta'ala yastazirukum fahiyya ala zi ila ziyaratih. Your Lord is summoning you for an invite. Allah Rabbul Izzah wishes an audience with you, so come to the invitation of your Lord. So they will say, Sam'an wa ta'a. We hear and we obey. And then special rides come prepared for them. They will get on these rides and they will rush towards the designated point of meeting. Wadil Afyah, huge place. أمر رب تبارك وتعالى بكرسيه فنصب هناك الله رب العزة orders for his kursi to be placed there and then he orders for chairs, pulpits, stations, stages to be set for the creation so there will be stations, you know, thrones of light منابر من نور can you imagine you sit on light. Like that gentle light, manabiru min nur, wa manabiru min lu'lu. And there will be other thrones made of pearls. Wa manabiru min zabarjad. And others from other gems. Wa manabiru min dhahabin, wa manabiru min fiddah. And some will sit on thrones of gold, others on thrones of silver. The lowest people, and there's no law in Jannah, will be people sitting on cushions of misk. They will sit on perfume. And they won't know there's people above them. Allah doesn't want them to have that feeling. And once they're comfortable, حتى إذا استقرت أماكنهم Once they're, 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 they're found قرار in their places, the caller calls. يا أهل الجنة O people of Jannah, إِنَّ لَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَوْعِدْ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُنْجِزَكُمُ You have a promise with Allah. He wishes to fulfill that promise. So they look at each other and they say, مَا هُوَ What promise is left? أَلَمْ يُبَيِّضْ وُجُوهَنَا Didn't he make our faces grow, glow bright? وَثَقِّلْ مَوَازِينَنَا Didn't he make our right deeds grow heavier than the bad deeds? 
وَيُزَحْزِحْنَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلْنَا الْجَنَّةِ Didn't he pass us over Jahannam and enter us into Jannah? What is left? So بَيْنَمَا هُمْ كَذَلِكْ As they are in this discussion, a light covers the whole of Jannah from above them. So for, they raise their heads. فَإِذَا الْجَبَّارُ جَلَّ جَلَالُهُ وَتَقَدَّسَتْ أَسْمَاؤُهُ أَشْرَفَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ The Lord Allah, Rabbul Izzah's presence is there above them in light. Because the hijab of Allah is light. وَحِجَابُهُ النُّورُ And then, this is the first time they hear their Lord. And Allah, Rabbul Izzah says, As-salamu alaykum ya ahlul jannah. So they say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayta ya dha al-jalali wal-ikram. Oh Allah, you are peace. From you is peace. Blessed and exalted are you. Tabarakta wa ta'alayta ya dha al-jalali wal-ikram. O Lord of majesty and grandeur. So Allah, Rabbul Izzah says, yadhaku ilayhim, the wording, laughing towards them. أين عبادي الذين أطاعوني بالغيب ولم يروني؟ Where are the servants who used to worship me, having never seen me? Where are you? They are there, but this is Naz. أين عبادي الذين أطاعوني بالغيب ولم يروني؟ Where are those who used to worship me, having never seen me? فهذا يوم مزيد. This is the day of increase. So they all say. أن قد رضينا فرض عنا أو الله we are pleased be pleased with us أو الله we are pleased be pleased with us so Allah رب العزة says إني لو لم أرض عنكم لم أسكنكم جنتي if I wasn't pleased I wouldn't put you in جنة ask today is the day of extra يوم مزيد so all the people of جنة together say أو الله show us yourself we want to look at you So Allah Rabbul Izza orders for the hijabs to be moved. And you will meet your Lord. The hadith says, كَمَا تَرَى الشَّمْسُ فِي الظَّهِيرَةِ وَالْقَمَرُ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ Like you see the sun at its full or the moon, or the sun at its, the sun at its noon or the moon at its full. And so much so that Allah Rabbul Izza will meet people individually. So that he will tell you when you're covered, you and him. He will say, my servant, remember you did this and this on this day and on that day. And he'll remind you some of your, your mistakes. So the righteous will say, Alam li, ya Rab. Won't you forgive me, Ya Rab? So he says, Bal bi Bas, It is my mercy and forgiveness that has brought you here. Wa in shi'ta faqra, wujuhun yawma'idhin nadhirah ila rabbiha nadhirah. وَوُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَاصِرَةٌ تَظُنُّ أَنْ يُفْعَلَ بِهَا فَاقِرَةٌ There will be eyes, faces looking that day at their Lord, looking, May Allah Rabbul Izzah grant me and you the joy of being in His presence and the joy of looking at the blessed face of the Dhul Arsh Al-Majid and فَعَالُ لِمَا يُرِيد My dear brothers, Jannah is, Jannah is the prize of prizes. Um, and Jannah is where the Rahmah of Allah Rabbul Izzah is. And when He Azza wa Jal honored you with Islam, um, He gave you the keys to enter Jannah. Now strive and struggle to earn the mercy of your Lord so that you can be of the people of Jannah. And in your striving and in struggling, remember this poor soul in your du'as. And say, Ya Rabb, enter him to Jannah without hisab and without adab. Although it, uh, he's not worthy in, 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 in works and in efforts, but you're merciful, Ya Rabb. فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتْ I understand that you will be getting ready for, for Maghrib, inshaAllah ta'ala. Um, I will end here. Uh, may Allah bless you and guide you and guard you. It has been a pleasure uh, being amidst you. Um, and subhanAllah, some of our brothers have come from as far as London and others from as far as... Uh, Scotland um, uh, so uh, you have honored me my Allah Rabbul Izzah honor you and my Allah Rabbul Izzah be pleased with you um, and my Allah Rabbul Izzah return myself back to to our home um, safe and sound um, and join us together if not in this world then in, in Jannat and Naim um, uh, in 
as the Arabs say, and I, I like this, this saying, I repeat it whenever I can. They say, Ahzanu qalbi la tazul, hatta ubashara bil qabul, wa ra'a kitabi bil yameen, wa taqarra'ini bil rasul. The anxieties of my heart will persist until I am giving the glad tidings of acceptance, my book and my right and my eyes on the Prophet. May Allah Rabbul Izza resurrect us with the Rasul. And may Allah Rabbul Izza grant us his companionship, although we missed out on it in this world. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.